going to get started. So welcome everyone. Shalom from Israel. My name is Rafi Shulman and I'm a co-founder of Olim Advisors. I'm here with my partner and my sister, Lara Itzhaki. Hi, Lara. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. And a special thank you to the Olim, to the Olim clients who have joined to share with you just a little bit of information, some tips, some advice, really just for you to keep in mind and hopefully uh, use to make the Aliyah process uh, a little easier. Um, we have over 280 people who have registered for tonight's webinar, which is amazing. And it's not just from the US and it's not just from Canada and UK and Australia, places where you would expect people to make Aliyah from. It's from all corners of the earth, from South America, Eastern Europe, from Africa, from Northern Europe. And it's just a pleasure and a privilege for us to be here with you and to help you and guide you. And hopefully you will find this uh, webinar informative. Um, before we get started, I just wanted to share with you uh, a few quick things. First of all, we are going to have our contact information at the end. And so um, you can reach out to Laura or myself, or you can reach out to uh, the Olim who have joined us tonight. Um, we know that everyone has questions and we just aren't able to get into all the details in tonight's webinar. We just don't have enough time and it's not really the place for it, but we would love to have one-on-one -on -one conversations with you to really understand what are your concerns? What are your questions? What are your plans? How can we help you? And so what we will do is we will also reach out to you throughout the week, but we encourage you to reach out to us and let's schedule some time to talk and we can really um, figure out what you need and how we can help you. The other thing is that um, we are going to have a Q&A session towards the end, so feel free to put your questions in the chat window, the Q&A window, and we will get to them, um, you know, and try and answer as many questions as we can. And last but not least, we will uh, send out a recording. So if you've come late, or if you need to leave early, or you have to step away, don't worry about it. Um, in a day or two, we'll send out an email with the link to the recording, so you can watch it over and over again. And also, please um, feel free to share it with anybody else that hasn't, uh, wasn't able to join us tonight. There are a lot of people that could benefit from this information. And if you know, of, if you have friends or family, if you know of anyone who you think would be interested, please feel free to send in the email as well. Okay, so I wanna just for a moment, take a step back in time and explain to you who Olim Advisors is, why Laura and I are doing this and, and really you know what, what brought us to tonight. And so if we go back in time to 2016, Laura and I, um, felt that people just needed help making Aliyah. You know, it's not an easy decision whether you're a single person coming in your 20s, a family, a retired couple. There's so many different uh, facts and considerations, and it's just challenging for people to, um, to go through this process. And so we wanted to do, do two things. The first thing is that we wanted to uh, encourage and help and inspire people who may maybe have been thinking about this for, for months or for years and saying, you know what, it's been my dream to live in Israel, but I don't know if I can do it or I don't know how to do it. And so we want to help them, guide them through that process, help them make decisions like finding the right community, um, finding schools if they have kids, finding a home before they make Aliyah. There's a lot of important decisions that go into uh, making Aliyah. We want to guide people through this process. And then once they get here, there are challenges. You know, let's be real. Moving to Israel, moving to any country for that matter, is not easy. And especially when you move to Israel where it's a different language, a different culture. And so what we set out to do is really guide people through this process to, help, to hold their hands, to really help them acclimate and adjust and to lead a very happy and successful life. And as we were doing that, we also realized that people who are here, whether it's for three years, five years, 10 years, still need help. So we actually added some additional services beyond our Aliyah packages for people who are looking to buy a home in Israel, for people that have children with special needs, or for people maybe that have medical conditions. So there's you know, the, people need a lot of help and we want to try and really help people um, make their dreams of uh, making Aliyah come true. And so that's really why we're here today. Um, and specifically for tonight's webinar, a lot of people reached out to us and said, you know what, I'm in my 50s and 60s or 70s and I'm thinking about making Aliyah, but my needs and my challenges are different than a family or different than a, a young couple. And so we wanted to put together 
a webinar that really addresses your concerns, really addresses the challenges that you might be dealing with. And so with that, Laura, I'm going to hand it over to you. If you can just take a moment, uh, introduce the panel, and then we'll talk about um, a few different topics, a few different tips and advice. So I just want to apologize and also explain to the panelists as well as everyone. Unfortunately, on today's webinar, for technical reasons, we'll be able to hear the panelists but not be able to see them. So I apologize to all of those that did their nails and having a beautiful lipstick <laughs> and all the other comments I'm getting. Um, I apologize. So um, what I'm going to ask each one of you to do, and I'll, I'll, I'll ask one of you at a time, is to introduce yourselves, tell everyone where you came from, where you live, and then answer the four following questions. Um, the first question being, what were some of the biggest challenges you faced before and after Aliyah, and how did you overcome them? What did you do to make sure you had good healthcare coverage? How much do you estimate the monthly expenses are for you here living in Israel? And finally, what tips and advice do you have for people who are considering Aliyah? Chuck, we're going to start with you. So if you can, uh, if you can start, we'll be happy if you can introduce yourself and answer those questions. Okay. So hello, my name is Chuck Feinstein. I am married, though we're doing split Aliyah, so which is a whole different thing right there. I am an American, but I came to Israel from living in Germany, which is means I had to use the Jewish agency. So that was in that was interesting, but I've been in Israel only four or five months. So it's uh, it's I'm still in the learning stage myself, and I certainly benefited from Olim advisors and um, all the services. And I just a minute I lost the uh, questions. So hang on. The first one would be what are yep. some of the biggest challenges you were facing? And okay. and after Yalia and before Yalia, and how did you overcome them? Uh, one of the big challenges that we had that took a lot of time was getting the documents. Because like everyone else, you know, marriages, divorces, deaths, children, education, you need, in my, my advice is once you start this process and you're working with Nefesh Benefesh or one of the other organizations of the Jewish agency, Find out what you need for documents early. Now, there are some that are only good for six months, depending on where you're at, but the ones that don't have a time limit, get started on getting the correct certified copies and apostilles. Because Americans, it's, it's, kind of a new con it's kind of a new concept for many of us. And uh, get started on that early, because that um, really held me up because we had some problems went to the wrong place, went to the wrong agency. One person said, this was good. So, so documents were a real challenge. So if you can do your homework and get assistance on what I need and, and how to get them done, that will save you a lot of headache, especially if the time is getting close and you don't have them, that, that can be a problem. So that's my suggestion. Next, next question. The next question is, what do you do to make sure, what did you do to make sure that you had good healthcare coverage? A lot of people ask I, us about their healthcare. Absolutely. In fact, uh, at one of the at one of the earlier seminars from Olim Advisors, there was someone from the Shira Pransky project mm -hmm. talking, and I would suggest you put their link in your information also. Mm -hmm. Because absolutely. Shira Shira Pransky project uh, is a resource that helps. Their mission is to help Olim uh, get the healthcare questions answered, so you know. If I'm looking to live in this place, but I need this kind of specialist and I need someone who speaks English or French or whatever, they, they can tell you who is available. Now, they can't tell you who's the best rated, but they can tell you what specialists are available. So especially if you're looking to live in a place that maybe only has one or two of the healthcare plans instead of all four, that could make a difference. So. That is that is what I use. I share Pransky reached out to them. They're busy. You have to be a little patient to get an answer, but they were very, but they were very patient and full of good information. And then once you start finding out what community or communities you're looking at, reach out to people that people are happy to share in general, you know, who they see, what their what successes they have, you know, on the Facebook forums and WhatsApp forums and all that for whatever communities you were looking at. And I signed up for about 10 different places 
all over Israel, you know, to talk to people. And that helped me narrow down where we ended up looking at and then where we ended up ultimately living. So right. sure, sure, Pransky project, big help. Next. And then how much do you estimate your monthly expenses are for you? <laughs> uh, that's, see, uh, I, you know, for me to say a number, I, I don't think that's, I, you know, it's so dependent on housing. Are you going right. to rent? Are you going to buy? Are you living in a Moshe? Are you living in Tel Aviv? But all this information is available because what you need to educate yourself on is the components of, say, the cost of housing. So there's rent. There's the house committee, Vod Bayat. There's Arnona, which is the tax that everyone pays. And like everything else, utilities and internet and all that. So again, research where you're looking at, talk to real estate agents, talk to people who are in the community. That's a big thing. Um, I will tell you, though the food here is wonderful, things are expensive. <laughs> so I would, uh, again, reach out to people. And, and so if you're looking to live in Ma'alo, or you're looking to live in Demona or wherever you're thinking at, reach out to the people. So it's more expensive than you think. Um, it, it's doable. But I, but I found that the more I learned, the more I said, okay, I, I need to live a little more simply. Mm -hmm. um, it also depends on your income. Are you going to work? Are you only on pensions or, you know, investments? It, it's so varied. I certainly couldn't give you a number. But again, my basic um, point of view is reach out to the people in the communities you're looking at and really work with them. Um, that's the only way to really find out what your expenses are going to be. And if you have someone with special needs or if you have medical issues, these are all things that um, you need to do your homework on early. That's the kind of stuff. Even if you're not going to go for two years, find out now. Yes, it might increase, but it'll help you perhaps make decisions on, you know, we really wanted to live X, but it turns out too far from a hospital, so expensive. We need to look at other places. You know, that's the kind of thing you can do to help your budget. Okay, last, last question. Uh, finally, do you have any tips and advice that you haven't mentioned already for people who are considering Aliyah right now? Organization, don't be afraid to ask people questions. Be organized, get a binder, start keeping track of things. <laughs> Did I always follow that advice? Of course not, but I learned <laughs> that that's the right thing to do. You had and, a good binder. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> now, but not when I started. But anyway, that's that's my own thing. But okay. um, but I have a very organized wife that also. <laughs> but um, um, I, so I, I would say, and whether you're religious or not is, that's a side effect. You have to have faith, amuna, confidence, whatever you depend on, you will depend on it because it's worth it. But it there will be days when you will just not be a happy person. And uh, you just have to get through that. Realize the goal is worth it. That's my input. So I, hopefully that helps. Thank and you. I, uh, Thank you. Chuck moved here from Germany before he lived in the United States, but right now from Germany, and he lives in a city up north called Naria. Oh, um, beautiful, just, beautiful yeah. place. Yeah, beautiful. we were just there for Shabbat. It's stunning. <laughs> Thank <Okay>. you so much. <laughs> we'll send pictures okay. later. <laughs> okay, Devora, Devora Weiss is up. <laughs> Okie doke. Um, good evening or morning, everyone. Um, I wanted to start off by giving a, a, a big thank you, Yashikayach and Kalakavod to Lara. Um, within two weeks of my arrival, the week before Purim, uh, we had gone to all the Misradim, to the bank, Misrada Pnim, Misrada Klitar. And within a month, I had my driver's license, I had my Tudat Zehut. I had my passport and my bank account up and running and the, um, the uh, what's that called? The uh, monthly supplement, uh, the, uh, yes, that, what she just said. <laughs> <laughs> the Alkalita was, was really, and that was like the smoothest thing. And it would have been a really difficult, bumpy landing um, had I not had somebody so special, so caring, uh, Lara made it so smooth and our camaraderie was really special. It was actually fun. 
Go it was in. fun. You're very fun. <laughs> it was fun. Um, and, and that really was a super jump start to getting settled and feeling grounded. And my only major challenge is that I don't have a place to live, but I am looking into an RV or a tent in the park. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen too many RVs, uh, but the uh, Mietz Hashem, uh, either something to rent will come up. I do have until like September 1st in the place on that right now. Um, and I am desperately looking to buy in Ramat Beit Shemesh Aleph. And it's a gewaldic, amazing neighborhood for Americans, for those over 50, 60, 70. Uh, there's a fantastic chevra and uh, I, I couldn't be happier. Um, you need a lot of money. Um, so there's no way to estimate uh, all the expenses, especially when you have grandchildren, you got to buy clothes and sandalim and ice cream and stuff like that. Um, but on a more serious note, in car, uh, the healthcare, I know with Nefesh Benefesh, you have to choose which kupa, which one of the four that you're going to join. We chose, well, I should say I chose. Uh, we also have a split aliyah. My husband is back in Highland Park, Edison, still working. And uh, he's being encouraged to retire. And until he does, it's good that he's still working because he can send me <laughs> money. So that's not a bad thing. Um, although it, it could be a little bit lonely and, you know, having to find places for Shabbos and all that. Um, but the thing with the healthcare, whatever kupa you join, it's really a totally new system here. And uh, I fortunately or unfortunately got to know it very well, very intimately in the very beginning with some health issues. I really didn't know the word hafnaya and hitchayvut, but I got to know the word referral of quickly and hitchayvut, I don't even know what that is in English, but I think it's when a, uh, a doctor makes a referral and you're like, I had to go to the hospital for something. So I didn't have to pay. So any procedure that I had was totally free. And that was really amazing. Um, there's also uh, like a little thing that I didn't know. I went to the pharmacy to renew a prescription and the pharmacist there said, you have to go to your doctor. So I marched over to the doctor's office and the nurse there looked at my file. Everybody has a computer file that all medical professionals have access to when you give them your Maccabi card. And that's really cool because whether it's a, a doctor or a podiatrist or a dermatologist, they all have access and can see all your blood work. And that's, that unity is really awesome. So the nurse put in that I needed a new prescription and then I went back to the pharmacy to pick it up. In the States, you call up Rite Aid and then three minutes later, you have your prescription. So everything is slightly different but it's been amazing and it's been awesome. And uh, in terms of choosing which kupa, I asked around people in Ramat Beit Shemesh, friends who are my age. I also asked a lot of family members and it seems to depend upon which part of the country that you're living in uh, as to which kupa will service you the best. And I'm very, very happy with Maccabi. Um, that's about it. Uh, advice is come. <laughs> Amazing here. It's, I don't even think about my house in Highland Park, Edison. It, it's just awesome to be in a Jewish country, all the chagim, all the mitzvot, uh, all the new friends. Everybody is incredibly welcoming. And even though I'm facing a little bit of housing stability at the moment, it's uh, the achdus and the kinship is beyond words. Amazing. Amazing. Devora, I just want to let you know next time you can ask on the Maccabi app, you can ask a doctor Close for the, the prescription. You don't have to actually get to the, to the office. You can just write it on your app and then it'll be waiting for you in your computer system uh -huh. that you can take straight to the pharmacy. So that's Jesus. the other thing. You need good friends <laughs> who know how to explain all these apps and all these yes. things because even, and my Hebrew is pretty good, it but is. it really helps 
when you have somebody who's a native or has been here 20 years to read over stuff and show you the shortcuts so that you don't feel like you are challenged with just renewing a prescription. And I physically went from the pharmacy to the doctor, back to the pharmacy. I know there's a way to do it online, but sometimes it's a little bit scary and that's where having a good friend comes in really handy. Thank you, Devorah. I always love speaking with you. Howie Margolin, are you with us? I am. Hi, Howie, how are you? Please introduce yourself. Let us know sure. where you came from, where you're living, and, um, and then if you can go through a few of the questions. Sure, so Howie Marlin, my wife and I, De my wife Debbie and I made Aliyah in January. Um, and thank you again to Illum Advisors for all their help. I think, um, you know, my first point would be in terms of biggest challenges, the, uh, when we made, we made Aliyah from New York again, and, and we live in Yerushalayim. Um, my first point on the biggest challenges, I think the point was raised earlier, pre-LEA process, the documentation. Um, it's not so much the apostilles, but my wife was born in South Africa and she needed to get a police clearance from South Africa, even though she had not lived there 30 plus years. So again, I think the, the documentation, uh, be prepared for the fact that you may have unique situations. I know somebody else right now who was, uh, doesn't have a birth certificate. Um, they're, they're trying to... Uh, Make Aliyah. So again, the documentation is going to be one of your challenges. The um, I, I think the the point on the, the point on health coverage. I think two things there. One, I think obviously um, you can wait till you get there, but I think the best thing to do, obviously, is, is obviously a start process right now. We actually our situation is unique. We actually bought a the place figuring, uh, counting on retirement. Uh, we bought our place in Yerushalayim in 2016. So we had some time and I retired in 2020. So we had some time to do some research beforehand. We, uh, my wife has specific medical issues. So we went to Tel Shomer Hospital to visit with some folks beforehand in terms of coverage of her particular medical products that she needed. And uh, that was very helpful. Um, the other thing I would do in terms of medical is if you have friends already there, that have uh, doctors. In Israel, the way the medical system works is the doc your, your doctor refers everything to other, to other facilities or other doctors that you need. So finding the right doctor is very important. And there are American, there are doctors, these English speaking doctors, in, in, whether they be from England, Australia, et cetera, US that are available in the different programs. So I would try to find out somebody that one of your friends uses if they're happy with them. Uh, in advance, we'll take some of the pressure off. And then, you know, in terms of getting prescriptions, you can obviously email if your Hebrew is not good, you can email them in uh, English via the app um, and, and ask for a prescription. So again, spend some time beforehand, maybe identifying which Kupa your friends are using, where you're going to live, which one's the best. We use Maccabi as well. We were advised to use Maccabi. And um, so far, uh, everything's gone pretty well. We've, again, we chose a doctor through a friend that um, we thought would be very good for both my wife and myself. So I think that's the point I would make on health coverage. Try to do as much work beforehand uh, and uh, identify perhaps who the doctor that you want and which guy you want to be a part of. Um, in terms of uh, monthly expenses, again, we live in your Shalim, and I can give you an idea because we have people, no people that are re renting right now. You know, with a three bedroom apartment, like now in Yushalayim, it's probably running for about a little thousand shekel a month. Um, and so I would assume that you're gonna, and Tel Aviv is obviously very expensive. So just in terms of living expenses, I would assume that your housing costs, if you throw in Arnona and you throw in some of the other maintenance or, or the body expenses, you're probably looking at somewhere between 10 and 15,000 shekel in a place like Yushalayim. And again, in terms of other living expenses, you know, it obviously depends on how much you wanna eat out and, you know, whether you're going to rent a car or you buy a car, et cetera. But I think you have to look at the other expenses as being somewhat comparable you know, to the U.S. And I think it would probably be another fifteen to 20,000 shekel a month in terms of uh, overall living expenses in a place like Yerushalayim. So you're looking at something, you know, thirty to 40,000 shekels, which is probably, you know, right now with the shekel, somewhere in the, um, you know, nine to $12,000 range uh, of monthly expenses. So it's not cheap. Um, there are things that are obviously, um, you know, it's funny, I, I laugh in terms of um, some of the ex expenditures like a container of orange juice here is probably five, six dollars. I think that it's 
cheaper in Israel with all the oranges that grow, but it's actually like seven dollars in Israel. So you have to be really cognizant of what's cheap and what's expensive there. Some of the stuff like obviously tomatoes and numbers, that sort of stuff is very cheap. And there are things that, you know, they're basically similar prices or more expensive to US. So again, I would use that as a as a rough budget for a city like Yushlein is probably 30 to check on. And again, what tips do I have in terms of uh, for people who are considering Aliyah? Uh, I, I'd say first, get yourself organized. Um, you know, I define the areas that you have to think about into five categories, housing, um, financial, where, you know, are you going to work, um, your bank, what is your tax situation going to be, medical, we already talked about, uh, legal, you know, again, not only the pre-documentation stuff, but you have other potential legal things that you have to think about, um, you know, besides Olium Advisors, obviously helps with all the back that standpoint, but perhaps you're going to want to have will set up in Israel. So think about uh, whether you need somebody ultimately for legal. It's not probably the most urgent, but something to put on the table. And then there's the other category, you know, what's your phone service going to be? Are you, what kind of transportation? Are you going to rely on? Uh, are you going to rent a car? Are you going to buy a car? Are you going to rely on taxi service? So these are some, some of the things that I think I would get organized. And the other broad category in terms of in advance, I would say get as much help as possible. Um, you, obviously, Olim advisors, we can talk about them, you know, and what a great job they do, but uh, you're going to need other help. I talked about medical a little bit. I talked about legal a little bit. Um, you know, you may want to speak to an accountant. Nefesh, Nefesh will tell you um, which accountants they recommend in terms of planning for that. And, you know, there are other things as well that, that where you can get as much help, you know, who's going to manage your property. Um, you know, all those things are, I think, very important to help you in terms of because uh, it is going to be a different system. And um, I think uh, there's much help as you can get or advice as you can get. Take advantage of Awe, thank you so much. We really appreciate you joining us from the US. Right now, we had to be overseas. Please send regards to Debbie. Laura, right, I just yeah. want to jump in just for a second there, just to clarify one thing that Howie mentioned on the expenses. And it's definitely uh, the figure that how he gave the 30 to 40,000 shekel is, is realistic in many situations, but there are ways of dramatically lowering that and how he touched upon it, but you could, you know, you could find uh, accommodations for 5,000, 6,000, 7,000 shekel, and you can lower your, you know, cost of living to, you know, a lower figure. And so I don't want people to walk away from this webinar thinking that, you know, that they're going to need to be able to afford 30 to 40,000 shekels to be able to move to Israel. Again, you know, it depends that's, that's on the choice. That's a usual line. That's a usual line. Correct. And correct. A hundred percent. I agree with you. But I just, I want to just clarify that because, you know, for a lot of people that it's unaffordable. And so, uh, you know, like with anything, you have to live within your means. And so I think the the feedback and, and the, the numbers that you gave are realistic, definitely for certain situations, but for people who can't afford to live in Yerushalayim or have a different lifestyle, there are ways of dramatically, uh, you know, lowering that. But I think how his main point of, you know, doing the prepar preparation is key. You know, if you're going to move to Ramat Bechemish or Shalim or Nahalia, wherever it is, really find out what the cost is in that area. And that will help you figure out, um, you know, your budget and, uh, you know, other things that are related to the area that you want to move to. Right. Thank you, Lafi. Yeah, it's definitely very subjective. Howie, thank you so much. Leah and Shaya Safin, are you uh, with us? Could you join us? and introduce yourself, let us know where you're from. Hi, Shaya. That was Leah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't hear it so well, ask my kids. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, we made Aliyah uh, 13 months ago from Sarasota, Florida. And? And um, <laughs> we had no idea where we were coming to, um, but um, that didn't scare us. The um, process for getting um, documents together was a little easier for us than for many because um, the state of California supplied them all with uh, very little difficulty and the apostille process has expediters and um, that was um, not uh, nearly the ordeal that Corona imposed by closing uh, the consulates and uh, making it uh, more difficult uh, to be interviewed. Um, those were, were bigger challenges. And uh, the only way you overcome those is by being patient. And um, savlanut is a wonderful word if you don't know it. Uh, it's one you'll come to appreciate uh, here. 
But, um, you know, the truth is that the uh, process of application for being Olim is very well scripted by Nefesh Benefesh. And uh, the difference between Olam advisors and Nefesh Benefesh, maybe somebody will have to speak to. Nefesh Benefesh guides the uh, process. Um, the Olam advisor process guides the individual. And uh, there's a, a very large difference uh, between those services. And one is hand by hand, and the other is they take you there. It's, um, it's um, one that you'll appreciate uh, when you uh, have the opportunity. Somebody was concerned about the right shipper. And um, I can tell you that there's probably nobody who will be more important than uh, the shipper that you choose. And again, uh, there's terrific um, reviews online and Nefesh Benefesh recommended the shipper we used and uh, they stored our goods for seven months while we were looking for a home, delivered them. Um, and um, it was um, quite a, a scene watching people send all your goods up through the window, you know, <laughs> to the third floor, <laughs> to the third floor, which is a very common process here because the Mali of older buildings is uh, less than a meter squared. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so you, you just you don't get too many things in there besides four people who know each other well and have showered <laughs> recently. Mm -hmm. so, Leah and Shaya uh, moved to Natanya to the northern part of Natanya just to fill everybody in. <laughs> yeah, sorry, we really for a soft landing, and we were recommended, you know, that we should look for an area that has Anglo English speaking people, since uh, our Hebrew is not fluent. Our Spanish is, but that didn't help here. So another challenge uh, when we were still stateside was uh, what appliances do we bring? And uh, of course, there's a difference in the U.S. to Israel as far as uh, power. And uh, <clears throat> we just decided that we were gonna bring converters and bring our small kitchen appliances, you know, like your KitchenAid, your, uh, your cuisine air art. Your air fryer, all these things that seemed- uh, Small appliances. Small. But the truth is you have to look at uh, whether or not the, the convenience of not having to find the place and find the item, as well as the expense difference here, Everything is available here. Sometimes there's a premium attached to what you want, but everything is available here. And um, I think Rafi spoke well to it. There are, there are lots of circumstances here where um, Yad Biyad uh, is uh, available. There, there's, a, there's a vigorous secondhand market in uh, many things here that could uh, reduce uh, your uh, capital expenses. Uh, so. Think about that. Um, you you do have to be prepared um, in unless you're um, fully fluent in Hebrew to go from being an educated literate member of society to uh, an illiterate outcast. That's uh, that's uh, certainly uh, a fact of life. If you want to find a lot of Israeli friends and you don't speak Hebrew well, you need to change your plan. You need to have. Uh, Israeli friends who are tolerant, and you can find some who volunteer <laughs> to bilingual Israeli friends are very nice. And uh, some of these Israelis will speak to you for an hour, a few times a week in Hebrew to improve your conversational Hebrew. Uh, it's a great volunteer program and it works in reverse for kids in school. So you can volunteer to help kids speak English. Um, and uh, that's a way of giving back. And um, be prepared to, to be challenged finding a home because there are 9 million people in this country and not every option is available everywhere. And some places you can define a circumstance that you think is essential for you to live in that doesn't exist. So you have to either change your conditions or change your location. And that's just a fact. Um, I, I'm, um, I've been a woodworker uh, for a long time as an avocation, and I couldn't find the place where we wanted to live. 
um, in the in the Nitsa district of Netanya um, that uh, would uh, accommodate my tools, and I didn't plan to bring the big stand-up uh, two twenty tools. They're just hard to find workspaces that um, hobby workspaces are not real common in, uh, in this particular setting. So you have to change your plan. So the third bedroom that I thought was gonna be my art studio and I was so excited about, I now share with Shia's tools, the you know, <laughs> ones that he's kept. And uh, it's quite cute and we're doing great. Yeah. Wonderful. Um, banking? Yeah, banking. Oh, uh, whatever you think about banking and wherever you go to bank, and ever what, everything you knew about banking uh, outside of Israel, forget it. Uh, <laughs> politely, um, you, you'll, you'll look around and you'll have to find a banker who you can deal with because never mind, it says Bank Leumi, this is the national bank. Now, every single one of those offices is its own fiefdom. Uh, it's same whether you're with, uh, you know, um, any of the other banks, Hapoa, Lim, uh, it doesn't matter. They're all individually run and banking is an individual process here. There are plenty of non-banking institutions that will send you money um, and um, there, some of them are safer than others, but they all wind up in a bank because until you can put it in a bank, you can't transfer it, you can't pay bills. So you, you need a real banking relationship but after you have it, you can do everything online. It's really true. And um, what yeah, about an estimate for for the two of you for a monthly on a monthly basis? What's a, an estimate of expenses? Do you think? Well, you know, um, if you're going to pass out the notes, I actually ran a spreadsheet, and it really depends if you if you're renting or you're buying. Obviously, if you're renting, you have a monthly expense. If you're buying, you have a capital expense that uh, is real that you can figure, but exclusive of, a, of the capital expense and exclusive of the rent, because uh, you can't compare. Rafi's point is you can always find a circumstance that fits your budget. Right. I, I, think, I think once you get that it fits your budget, what's the rest of the budget look like, okay? Do you need a car? You need public transportation is really great here, uh, but a car is another capital expense. Plus, and, we, I'm sorry, I just want to say, plus where we live, we can walk to everything that we mm -hmm. need. Uh -huh. So that's uh, that a great, a great uh, virtue of where we live, where we chose to live. Not to mention the yam right outside the door. Yeah, we're literally <laughs> on Mol Hayam. We look out the window and see the Mediterranean. So. Uh, that that's a cost, but you know you you have, you have priorities. You pay for the view. Um, but but the real number um, outside of Meiser, um, you know, is um, is very variable. And I would tell you that our circumstance uh, is that it probably doesn't run us more than about eighty five hundred shekels, about twenty five hundred dollars a month for. Um, VOD, insurance for the house, car insurance, health, water, electric, fuel, food, miscellaneous tools, all those things thrown in. And uh, how about tips for people who are, uh, are going to come? Be flexible. Be open-minded. Mm -hmm. Be patient. Laugh a lot. And the drivers, <laughs> daily drivers, the service providers, questionable service, mail service. <laughs> And a variety of other things. And Just yeah. enjoy the differences for what they are. And, you know, you're in the land of Israel. I mean, what could be better? You're living with your fellow Jews, the Hagim, as Deborah Weiss said, are just un unreal. It's exciting to walk to the, our key car and see the high school kids, you know, the boys dressed in tutus. <laughs> for Purim, for Purim. Yes, of course. <laughs> <laughs> And all the holidays are just so different and special here, just beyond words. And for those of you who are in South America, there are people who hablan español aquí. 
<laughs> muy bien, muy bien. You guys are amazing. You always see the positive. It's incredible. The two of you are amazing, amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. You've been a great help to us. And great friends. Our pleasure. We're going to come visit you by the ocean. <laughs> Moshe, Wonderful. you're up. You're up, Moshe. Please introduce yourself. And if you can go through the questions, just let everyone know where you came from. And if anyone wants to share their age, people are asking, but that's not a question that anyone needs to, uh, needs to. Everyone here is in their 50s, 60s, and 70s, and young, younger than anyone else that I know. Moshe, go ahead. Uh, my name is Moshe Bell. My wife, Sarah, and I made Aliyah from... Uh, Boynton Beach, Florida, uh, 13 months ago. Uh, we're living in Beitel, which is about 30 minutes uh, the outside of Jerusalem in Samaria. Uh, some of the biggest challenges that my wife and I faced, as, as everyone has said very clearly, is was the paperwork itself. Um, we made a, a very spontaneous decision to make Aliyah after our daughter gave us our, our first grandson uh, here in Israel. And having done project management most of my life to me was, oh, okay. So I make my spreadsheets and I know what I need to do and everything should just go bing, bang, boom. And that was like August and we uh, scurried around and just before Rosh Hashanah, we signed papers on our home in Beitel. And off we went after the hygiene were over back to Florida to interview and choose uh, a company that was going to send everything that we own, lock, stock and barrel to our new home in Eretz Yisrael. Uh, well, that happened. <laughs> the paperwork didn't happen for quite some time. It took us almost another seven months to get that and the approval with the with the Aliyah visas uh, to to actually come. So we ended up coming in the midst of COVID, in the midst of the eleven day war, um, to a to a cab driver that decided to give us an hour and a half tour of an industrial park on the way. <laughs> but you know, welcome to Israel. But our neighborhood decided that you know we were very exciting, crazy Americans making Aliyah, and uh, they had a parade for us in the the, the environs of our of our building. And Ruch Hashem, it's been good. Um, how did we overcome all of this? Well, did a lot of walking by myself and yelling at Shiram. Um, my wife did a awful lot of of Tehillim, we cried to friends and neighbors and countrymen all over Florida because we had sold the house <laughs> and our goods were on a ship somewhere between Florida and here. But uh, we, we finally got here. Um, we moved in a number of houses. And we, and we lived out of suitcases this entire time, moving from one place to another until finally we got our, our visas to leave. Um, in terms of healthcare coverage, um, we asked a lot of people that we had met in the course of finding our home, uh, what was here in Beit El and what they were using and what type of issues they needed to address. Uh, my wife and I are more uh, natural based in terms of, of that, but you need to have the, the healthcare coverage irregardless. So I found that all things considered, healthcare coverage here is, is, is a pittance compared to what you can pay in the United States. So once we chose our, our provider, so for another 25 or 30 shekel a month, you can get the additional coverages. So we just piled it all on and great. I can't say that the one time that I needed to see someone over there that it was a great experience, but I don't really have much to compare it to. So that, that's, that's as far as healthcare goes. Um, I, I'll agree uh, with the sufferings that our monthly expenses are about 8,500 shekel a month, the equivalent of about 2,500, 3,000 shekel, uh, $3,000 uh, a month uh, US dollars. 
And that would include uh, all of our phone, our internet, our uh, utilities, the, the property taxes that they call Arnona here, house insurance, auto insurance, groceries, uh, really soup to nuts. Um, we still maintain some insurance in the United States uh, in terms of life insurance, but pretty much everything is here. And, and that's about what it's running. Some things you pay out over the course of a year, some things you pay out over the course of a quarter, uh, but that's, that's pretty much how, how my tracking of it has looked. Um, what tips and advice do I have for people that are considering Aliyah? Laura. First of all, <laughs> you need a lot of patience. Second of all, all, all I can, can, can say in terms of how I got to, to, to Olim Advisors was my dad years ago turning to me and saying, I know you can change the flat tire on your car, but wouldn't you prefer to be sitting in the car while it's raining on the side of the road with your wife and have someone else do it for you? So I was a member of, of roadside assistance with AAA for, for 20 years. So when I spoke to Laura about the services they provide, my wife speaks a passable Hebrew in the last 13 months. It's much, much better. Um, I'm very happy sitting in front of my Gemara. I don't speak a whole lot. I understand audio wise a lot better than I can communicate, but I've got my Google translate on my phone. Um, so what, what Olim Advisors did for us was Let's meet here, let's take care of this, let's meet here, let's take care of that. And one after another, all of these governmental uh, visits that establish the necessities of being a new citizen in a new country with a language barrier fell. And as I think someone else mentioned, it became fun. We got to meet with, 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 with Rafi and with Laura and, and we went and we knocked these things out and we had a good time and we got to go wandering around from there to wherever we wanted to go see in the Holy Land. Uh, the other thing that, that I think that people need to recognize and really this came from a, a couple that, that we were friends with in, in Florida. So I told them, you know, Mazel Tov, my daughter had a, had a son, we're going to Married to Israel. And she said, Well, how long are you going for? I said, I don't know. We'll come back for uh, in September. She says, You're crazy. She says, You got a three month visa there. What's the difference? Spend the money and stay for the Om Tovim. And we did. It was the best advice we ever got. You can't, you can't get a, 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 a hasaga of what living in Eretz Israel is like until you really have your feet on the ground. And if you approach it as every step I'm taking is holy, every piece of food that I put in my mouth, especially this year we're being Shemitah, it has Kedusha Sa'aretz. We were, we were blessed to have grapes and figs and lemons and apples growing in our own teeny weeny little backyard. See the bracha in where you're going and learn to laugh at it. Um, you can get spoiled in the United States. I can't speak for other countries. I don't have familiarity. In the United States, it's very simple. You can go into Walmart, you can go into Target, you can go into Home Depot and Lowe's. You can get everything you want. None of it exists here. It's, you go one place to get one thing, another place to get another thing. And, and great, you don't bother being a prime member. If you're gonna order from Amazon, the be a be a, uh, a gratitude member when your package actually gets here. <laughs> I showed up at the post office the other day. He says, "Oh, he says, look, they they delivered your package to Tacoa. It's an hour and a half away. <laughs> it's a mistake," he tells me. So my wife spends two hours on the phone and gets someone who tells her, "We'll investigate it and decide whether we're going to deliver it to you." So you know, all you got to do is laugh because if you don't, you're going to make yourself a sugar. Laura saw me when I was uh, when we had just come, and, and I was I was literally out of my head because there were so many things that were frustrating. And she calmed me down, 
and she took us by the hand, or she took my wife by the hand, <laughs> and, and you know, it's like anything, you get what you pay for. If you're gonna shop around for the cheapest tomato, I assure you it was not gonna be quite as firm as the tomato that you might've spent a, little, spent a little bit more on. So learn to adapt, learn to laugh, learn to make friends that are different than you, learn that shuls are different than everywhere else, that overall people really do wanna help you. And beneath the gruff, tough, Israeli persona that presents itself on the outside, it's, it's like the Sabra. They're sweet mm -hmm. on the inside. <laughs> You just, you just have to give them a chance. It's so true. Thank you so much, Moshe. Thank you, Sarah. We appreciate it. And now we're going to please speak to Naomi and Stanley Goldis. Are you guys with us? Naomi, you can just unmute yourselves. I should be there. Yeah, she's here. Naomi and Stanley, if you can unmute yourselves and you can introduce yourselves to everybody. Yeah. Okay. There you Let's, go. Now we Naomi. Okay. Um, Stanley was going to start, but I'll start um, <laughs> because one of the issues that a lot of people have, we didn't have. We were lucky enough to have four of our children make Aliyah at various times and within the past. 20 to 15 years ago. So we bought an apartment right away. So when we finally decided to make Aliyah, we had a place to live. And that was a big help. Um, the paperwork was a nightmare because we lived in several different states. We were both married twice. We needed all sorts of millions of documents, but we got them. Um, we made Aliyah a, year, a little over a year and a half ago. Um, so we're the oldest ones. And we're probably the oldest ones in this group. I'm 74 and Stanley is 77, but we're really very young. Uh, <laughs> we go by biological age, yeah. not chronological age. <laughs> and- um, Absolutely. Yes. Um, what was I going to say? So see, now I even forgot. Um, the Some thing I would say is that no one mentioned, which I think is really important, is to wherever you're going to live, whether you're even before you move, sign up for the local English listserv. You'll find out so much about the community and what's being offered and different classes, whether you're interested in sports or dance or shiurim or hiking or anything. And it's a great way to meet people. There are quite a lot of activities that are geared to, they say, the over 55 group. And um, it's, a, it's an easy way to make friends if you don't want to spend your whole life playing with your grandchildren. Now, Stanley can talk about more uh, serious issues. Uh, it looks like most of the people covered a lot of uh, the answers that we would have given. So I'll just touch on some things that perhaps weren't mentioned uh, regarding a coupa and a primary doctor. Uh, not only may you wanna have an English speaking doctor, but someone who has the same cultural and medical philosophy is you. You'll find that different primary physicians rely on you to be the advocate for yourself where others will take a more proactive approach. And I'm gonna be in the process of changing the primary because I went there with a complete medical history, which I encourage everyone to put together, looks at the medical history and says, thank you, goodbye. I didn't address any of the issues and I had a follow up with that. So it's important that the cultural and medical philosophy of the doctor fits what you are used to. Uh, housing costs, renting um, versus buying. I think what I've found out is renting is a lot less expensive 
proportionally than buying it appears, I guess Lara can um, confirm that about three to 4% of the value of the property is what you pay in rent, whereas in Philadelphia and other metro large metropolitan cities, I find that percentage to be uh, uh, more than double that. Uh, the transportation was already addressed and walking distance. Uh, be sure if you're going to get an Israeli driver's license, we had a little difficulty. Be sure to have your prior, I think, Larry, it's five years mm -hmm. worth of license. So if your license was issued two years ago, you should get a verification. If you don't have that voided license, you should get a verification from the um, DMV. Uh, the verification didn't help me. I needed the license. I needed a copy of the license. Copy of the license. So be sure to have that for at least uh, the prior five years. Uh, because challenges navigating websites. People alluded to the importance of uh, knowing you've read. We had, unfortunately, it's children, and we use Google Translate. So if you don't have Google Translate as, a, as an app, get it, because it has been extremely helpful. Uh, Savlan Newt, I can't agree with everyone more than that. Things will just take longer. Medical appointments will take longer. There is an opportunity, at least in uh, Ramat Beit Shemesh, to pay for private physicians. So it's something to look into. I needed the private physician for a, a minor uh, foot injury from the Jerusalem Marathon, and it would have taken a week. I paid privately. I saw someone that afternoon. So something to uh, consider. Um, you want to talk about that, Naomi? What? Adequate health coverage? No, it's, it, everyone spoke about it. Right, don't give up your current coverage. Uh, also, I think, Larry, there was some private coverage available for those people under age 70. Supplemental. Some private kind of coverage. supplemental private coverage. We cannot avail ourselves of that, but something to look into. I'm not really familiar with that. I think once you get it, you you can keep it for forever, but you have to get it before you turn 70. So there's supplemental for each one of the kupots, each no, one No, but of this is, this is I, on top of it. This right, is, this is a private. And then you can also get this private insurance, which depending on the company, they each have different um, rules and regulations to how to get in. The, the healthcare in Israel, the what's covered by the national healthcare is, uh, applicable to anyone, no matter age or if they have any pre-existing conditions. The right. private insurance that you're discussing now or selling, if you went to a private doctor, um, those companies, they they have criteria and you, either, you, you can either get accepted or not. But the Israeli healthcare, the four kupot has to accept every single person. I brought some renewal prescriptions from my current doctor just in case it was a problem. So in addition to bringing your actual prescription, I think it's helpful if you obtain a renewal prescription from your current doctor. It seems like many pharmacies will honor the uh, prescription from your current physician um, outside of Israel. Uh, yeah. Monthly and just if you cost, have any, sorry, go ahead. Because I think I think ours are a little higher because I think we're just spending more, but just to capsulize one item, if you calculate the cost of gasoline in Israel, it's roughly $8, did we lose you? Yep. Now we're here. No, we're here. Here. Now we're here. Yeah. Yeah. The cost of gasoline in Israel is about $8.70 a gallon if you uh, calculate. We have and an we, error. And we find that, um, food and restaurants can be 20, 25% more. Mm -hmm. Do you still hear us? Yeah, we hear you. We do. Okay. No, okay. We, don't, we, don't we can't see, see you, that's okay. Um, and then the last thing is any other tips or advice tips. that you might have for people? Yeah. This is really Naomi's tip, so I'll let her. <laughs> I said a, this. no, you're A, you okay. like the. Okay, um, when you're looking to live somewhere, unless you have to live somewhere because your children are there. We, 
we have four children who all settled in Beit Shemesh, well, not Beit Shemesh, and they're the only children we have in Israel, so we really didn't have a lot of choice here. But live in an area where people are like you, age-wise, religiously, culturally. Um, I think if we didn't have children in Ramat Beit Shemesh, we would probably live somewhere else. Um, we've, but we have met people. I go to a lot of classes. I'm very, we're both very physically active. So our friends are all more, are closer to our children's age than our age. Mm -hmm. And uh, we do a lot of fun things, which is much more than we did in the States. We didn't do anything that was fun. Well, Stanley <laughs> cycled a lot, but. Um, Can't speak for other cities, but in Ramat Pechem, is the over 55 group, because they were over 55 when they started, it's probably over 65. And there's hikes, there's lectures, there's a lot of activities that uh, they do. And we've met some you know, very nice folks there. And I would encourage people to look at those groups as a way of getting to meet other people. Yeah. Oh, one more thing. If you haven't bought yet and you're going to buy, a realtor in Israel is very different than a realtor in the States. Um, in the States, you get a realtor, they do everything for you. They give you all sorts of advice. They tell you what to do when you have to sell your house, buy a house. A realtor in Israel does one thing. They show an apartment and you pay them a humongous fee. And then you also have to hire a lawyer to handle all the legal end of it. So you're on your own. That's where we come in. That's uh, why we launched the real estate service. And, uh, you know, it's definitely uh, it's a need for people across the board, whether you're renting or buying before you get to Israel, after the process of buying in Israel is very different from the States and UK very and South difficult. Africa and Australia. And if we had had you guys when we did it the second time we bought, we bought a second time, we sold our smaller apartment, bought something larger. It certainly would have made it a lot easier for us. And maybe you could still help us now because we're not, we're almost moved in, but you know, it's like the Arnona bills are still coming for our old apartment. How do we switch it to the new apartment? And it's also even just switching the gas. We had to get the people who lived there before copy their two dots of hood. Well, the person who lived who owned the apartment before we bought it was dead. So that's a pretty hard thing to do. And um, some of the challenge you face in Israel. Right. Thank Great, you. Great, wonderful. So Laura, have we gotten through? I think we got to everybody, right? Yes, we did. Thank you everyone so much wonderful. for sharing with us. So we wonder, I know we're, we've kind of run over time, but because of the issues we had at the beginning, we're still going to stay on and answer a few questions. Um, just one thing before we get to the questions, I know that um, the financial thing is, is a financial question the concern is the big issue. One topic that we didn't get into, which is something that a lot of people um, have questions about is the whole estate planning. And if you're in the US and in Israel, and so if this is something that you're wondering about and need help with, uh, we work with a lawyer who we can put you in touch with and, uh, you know, they can talk to, he can talk to you about th this topic. Um, let's just take a look at uh, some of the questions. So one question that came up a, a few times is, do you have to stay in Israel? How long do you have to stay in Israel? You know, a lot of people who move to Israel have family in the countries where they've left or they have businesses and they have to go back and forth. And so there's a few factors and it impacts a few things. Um, the general kind of number that a lot of people throw out there is 183 days, in essence, half a year. But you have to keep in mind that it applies differently to different situations. So, for example, your sal klita, which is the financial uh, assistance that you get at the beginning of the year, or oh, sorry, when you make aliyah, if you leave, then that stops. So that's something to keep in mind. Uh, your health care, of course, your taxes. And so what I'd recommend that you do is, again, reach out to us and, and let us know specifically uh, what you're asking about, and we can help you figure it out because it does depend on your situation and, and you know, the reasons why you're asking. So that's that was one question. Um, another question that came up here is about Ulpan. So maybe somebody, uh, one of the Olim here can just talk about um, 
did you do a pun? And if you did, which pun did you do? There's the private one and, and the public one. So I'll just open it up to anyone who wants to chime in and talk about that. Um, I signed up. I went to the Matnas in Ramat Bey Chemish immediately. And I, I, as I mentioned before, I arrived in March. The Opan begins in September. And uh, there are some private ones that are available that you get reimbursed. This is like the original one that was mentioned, uh, you know, in all the booklets and all that. I walked in, they took my name and they said, goodbye, we'll call you. So I thought I would be starting Opan like immediately or that it rotated throughout the year. So I'm waiting to start in September face-to-face -face in the classroom. And I still have the opportunity to go to the other one where you pay and then you get reimbursed. So I might do that afterwards. I think you have like a year and a half or five years, I don't even know, to do it. But I'm looking forward to it. And even though my Hebrew is pretty good, I still don't understand the news and I want to get better. So I think it's really a valuable experience to learn more Hebrew, to meet people, and have fun. And what Devor is just mentioning is that there are the two different types of upanim. There's the upan that was what was always here. It's it's uh, relatively larger classes. It does usually start in September. Some communities you do it locally. Some communities it does have it twice a year. It goes on usually for five months, and it's five days a week, so five hours. It's it's a pretty intense upan. And then the government started this new. Um, private Alpanim that they were subsidizing in 2017. And there are certain Alpanim that you can, after you do this first Alpan, which is totally free, the second one is a private Alpan that you pay out of pocket. It's 7,500 shekel per person. And the government reimburses you in three payments, the full amount, as long as you attend, um, I believe it's 80% of the classes and you take a test at the end. Uh, generally, they're much smaller classes. They only meet maybe two or three times a week. There's also um, you can sometimes not just morning hours, could be afternoon hours or evenings if someone's working. So it's just uh, different options. But as Devora said, you can really do both of them. So it's an incredible uh, um, plus that people have making Aliyah and getting that help. Right, right. There's a question here about a few questions about getting documents apostilled and, and getting documents from different countries. And um, I just want to clarify, I guess, as, as it was mentioned earlier, um, we don't get involved in, in that paperwork, whether it's Nefesh Benefesh, the Jewish agency, Telfed, whichever organization you're working with to get approved, you have to work with them specifically to find out the process, find out what documents are required, and then submit it to them. It's one area that we, we don't get involved in. So what I could simply recommend, though, is that you stay on top of things, get documents in as quickly as possible, and be persistent. Even if you don't live in Israel yet, be Israeli. It's okay that you can you know nudge a little bit and be a little assertive. If you do it in a nice way, you, you will often find that being persistent will move things along. So just make sure that um, you do that and, and get things in writing because there are a lot of people involved in the in this process. And so, you know, the more information you can get and the more emails you can get in writing, that will help you um, get through the process as quickly as possible. Okay, there was a question here about um, different profession, professionals to work with, accountants, lawyers, how do you find right ones? And what I would recommend is really... Um, go based on, on recommendations. So if you're looking for a real estate lawyer, if you're looking for an accountant, talk to people, talk to us, um, you know, uh, go, go with people that other people have used and recommended because these people do play a very important role and you want to make sure you're working with the right people. I think something that a lot of um, the panelists raised is um, using the groups, whether it's WhatsApp groups or Yahoo groups uh, in the communities to find that information. And people are asking here, you know, how many communities or how many places did you look at? So everyone really needs to, it's such a subjective question. You know, are you looking to live in a specific community? Do you want a community that's very Anglo and not Anglo? Do you want to live up north, down south by the ocean? Um, it's important to think about all those factors, what your budget is, obviously. And then once you come up with all of those answers, then it's important to come here to Israel and to actually see the places for yourselves. Um, 
you know, some of our clients, they, they started up north and traveled down to really check out what, what suited them. And sometimes people thought that they were going to go live in one place and, and it became uh, very different than what they thought. So it, it is subjective. It is important to think about what you're looking for, to speak to people. Uh, people here are very, very supportive in all the groups, uh, the Facebook groups, the WhatsApp groups. People are wonderful. They want to give advice. They, they want to help and, uh, and use that. And, and then come in and come and actually see the different options for yourselves and see what's suitable for you, yourself, your family, um, and, and, uh, and hopefully make uh, the right decision. There's a question here about uh, continuing Medicare payments. So I'll, I'll open up to the group again. Once you left Israel, did you continue making your, your payments or did you stop your contributions to the, the medical plan that you had in the States? Goldens, can you still hear us? Yeah. Okay, great. Um, we decided for the time being to keep our Medicare Part A and Part B and the drug plan. The drug plan will probably stop, but uh, I'm having some difficulty with, um, with uh, a, a specialist and orthopedist, so I'm still keeping my plan B until I can navigate the Israeli system and find the, the right doctor. And there's, then I would probably cancel uh, Part B, but Part A, there's no reason why you should cancel since uh, the Part A doesn't cost you anything to keep that part of Medicare. And if you were to cancel it, you can't get it back or it's very difficult. So uh, we've kept it for the time being now for what, 21 months. And uh, we'll gradually, as we get more um, familiar and comfortable with the physicians here, then uh, we'll probably drop the uh, Part B and the uh, prescription plan. Got it. Okay. This, this is Ali Marklin. I've heard of numerous people in my life as well just having knee replacement surgery. I would highly recommend keeping your insurance in America. I don't, I don't know that for, for basic medical coverage, I think, um, you know, there's no, there's no issues in Israel, but if something like that, you have to navigate. Uh, you may want to think about keeping your insurance here. You've had other friends as well that have come back to the States when they've had a major surgery like that. Right. Okay. Thank you. Just going through the questions here. I think we've gotten to many of those. Um, let me just see here. You know, the specific questions about Bituach Lumi coverage. Um, Bituach Lumi is not something that we... Um, get that involved in it's just there's a lot of uh, issues that come up with Bituach Lomi and so um, there are different organizations that kind of focus on that different people that focus on that if the general questions you know feel free to reach out to us but uh, Bituach Lomi is kind of a, an anon of its own so it's uh, you know it's something that you need to look into and be aware of um, it just uh, you know this more than others really depends on age and you know medical conditions and things like that so uh, it is something that, that definitely is worthwhile spending time looking into. I think, Laura, I think we've covered everything. I'm just getting yeah, through absolutely. everything. Yeah, absolutely. And we'll also add here the Shira Pransky project, and we'll also put on here. Uh, oh, here. Thank you, Afi, all of the... Can I add one more thing? Please. Absolutely. Okay, one thing is about cars. Um, I think somebody put a uh, asked a question, and I can only speak personally. I'm in Ramape Chemesh. Um, I was working with somebody who sells used cars, a very honest person, and I made sure to work with him for two months before I came. And within five days of my becoming an Ola Hadasha, I had a car and it's been invaluable. Yes, the gas is crazy expensive. Yes, I still take buses sometimes between Beit Shemesh and Yerushalayim, but I simply could not manage with the shopping and the doing all the things that I'm used to doing and living a similar lifestyle to the one I had in New Jersey without a car. Thank you, Deborah. Right. Definitely uh, getting a secondhand car might be an option because the brand new cars are very expensive, right. even after you get an OLED discount. Absolutely. absolutely. Okay. Well, I think um, that does it, does it for today. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. And again, apologize for the technical issues at the beginning. Um, we do want to talk to you and we do want to help you and we encourage you to reach out to, 
to us. Uh, we're going to reach out to you as well in the upcoming days and weeks. And so just take a moment when we call you and email you, just let us know where things stand. If you don't need help, that's amazing. If you do need help, we're here for you. And we just want to really um, be uh, a lending hand wherever we can and give you some advice and guidance. And so thanks everyone for joining. We wish you the best of uh, luck with your plans and have a wonderful and a healthy week. Take care, everybody. Good night. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you to all the panelists. Thank for everyone for your time. Have a Laila Tov. Good night. I wonder why it disappeared. Stanley?